Hi guys, good morning. This is Raj Sahu from India, Goa. It's early morning and I'm having my cup of tea. Hmm? I like this avocado cup. Hmm. The tea is delicious, guys. You know what I use? I use, um, it's called Taj, T-A-J, Taj leaves. It's a black tea and uh, it's one of the best teas of India. And I think you get it in Indian stores or on also on Amazon.com online. And then first I boil water and put the tea leaves, a teaspoonful of tea leaves, heaping teaspoon of the black tea. Then add sugar, add some jaggery. Jaggery is, uh, check out what, it's like brown sugar, okay? So it imparts a lot of flavor. And it's very organic and full of minerals. So I have added, add a little sugar, little uh, jaggery because I like my tea sweet, not extra sweet, but sweet. And then the water and then here comes the most important part. I add what is called elaichi in India, cardamom. Cardamom is a wonderful spice, very native to India. Big cleaner of the body, an amazing flavoring spice. Check it out guys online. I crush them so the little seeds are out, out which impart that flavor. Black seeds are the best. Greenish colored, always opt for greenish colored um, cardamom. You get them online anywhere. Nowadays everything is available everywhere. So I add that and then I have milk. Milk, at least half of the, the portion has to be milk. So we get nutrition, I get nutrition. Then I stir the pot. As I have been stirring the pot <laughs> in the Christian world. And then let it cook nicely, you know. Go away, rest while it cooks gently. Or do your chores. But we need some boils. Finally it needs to boil for a while. So it all comes together nicely. Give it some time, 10, 15, 20 minutes to cook. As the more uh, the simmered chai or tea is one of the best teas. We have to catch the flavors. And when it's ready, oh man, just filter it, strain it rather. And then you have a, an amazing cup of tea. Because it has five, six things in it. It also has a little bit of chai spice in it. You can use that or that's optional. I use chai spice. Indians are spice in everything. <laughs> so if you would like, <laughs> you can try. There are a lot of um, American teas because I've been there 20 years. And I used to go to a place called Albertson. They had lovely free flavored teas. But all I take is a little sachet of masalas. Masalas means blended spices which are not hot at all. They are right for this. It's very tasty. Guys, I was at the beach last night. Alright. Whenever I feel like a good workout or I'm my spirits are being pulled down by my adversaries. That's um, devil and boys. Because of the work I do, they attack me very often. I'm regularly attacked by them. It's fine. It's occupational hazard. Because I'm exposing the head honcho of the kingdom of darkness, Mr. Paul. Paul's Apostle Paul. Once Paul is out of there, you can see Jesus in all his glory, his pristine glory and pristine doctrine of salvation, which is dramatically different or diametrically opposite to that of Paul. So they hammer me. I, ha I don't have an easy life, guys. I cannot for that very reason. So... I go run to the beach. <laughs> what happens in the crowd? This is a good uh, suggestion for you guys. If you're getting hammered by the devil. You know how the things I feel so wretched at that time. But on the beach his power <laughs> plummets. It goes down substantially. You know why? Because there are hundreds of people. I don't know about beaches there. In Santa Monica there in California also there were hundreds of people. But there were, the waters were too cold. The waters here are warm, so I go into the waters. Just a little bit ankle or knee at the most, knee deep. Oh, I feel so good in the presence of the crowd. 
I start blessing, love all, bless all, love all, bless all. Father God, love you and bless all your children or potential children because all were made in the image and likeness of Father God. It is another thing. We have a will and sometimes we don't choose the right things and that causes a separation between Father and us, Father God and us. Try not to make that separation. Walk in obedience. Best ways, easiest ways, do the right things right away. Fear God, practice righteousness. Fear God, he has to be feared. That is not taught nowadays. Reverend fear and all that means nothing. Fear him as fear means. It's lovely fear at the end of the day. It turns beautiful. And make it, uh, fake it while you, if you can't make it. Fake it until you make it. Start. Start fearing God. Start practicing righteousness. What is righteousness again? Doing the right things right away. That's all it is. It's the most beautiful thing. That's what God wants us because he's a good God. He's a righteous God. All right. On the beach, while I was, I do some drill exercises which we used to do at school in India. Why not like do multitask while I walk briskly and splash waters with my bare foot. <laughs> And um, the sea water is there, Baga Beach, that's in Goa. Very, very little, beautiful, almost like a pond, gentle waves coming. Of course, it's like a cove at the end. It's really beautiful there. I wish I could send some pictures. I think I'll put a picture on the title of this, like on the thumbnail. So, guys, I was thrashing. I was like with my foot, splashing the waters around, like kicking the water. I was feeling really good. And not an iota of an attack there. Nothing. I was feeling on top of the world. Just as the people are enjoying, laughing, smiling, that aura comes, that vibe is fantastic. Praise God. Learn to praise God in everything. Tell Him how much you love Him. Guys, see how His spirit reacts when you say, Father, I love you. Father God, I love you. These are very deep things which are not taught. So please, tell Him. He craves it. Can you believe Job says, what is in a mankind that you are so obsessed with us? I'm paraphrasing. What is in a man? What is in mankind that you're so obsessed with everything we do? He does. Don't ask why, what, when. The reason is one. Four-lettered word. Love. He loves us. And he wants us to love him. That should be the first thing which should be taught in any church which is not they talk about how to get saved, forgetting Jesus' caveat. They, these churches have actually taught the other way. They have taught the doctrine of Antichrist. That's why Jesus called out Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9. What did he say? They call themselves synagogue of God, but they are synagogue of the devil. <laughs> That's us. So they don't teach us to, they teach us to crave salvation like do this and you'll be saved. Believe in Jesus, all that. Doesn't help. Jesus didn't talk like that. He spoke the other way around. Whoever wants to save their life, think about salvation. Think very carefully right now. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever wants to lay down their life for me and for the sake of my gospel will find it. Keep it. He's saying that you will get saved when you stop craving salvation. Do not even pay attention to salvation, but do your work and be ready to lay down your life exactly as a good soldier of the kingdom. Are you, if, if you're list, enlisting soldiers to be, and you're the sergeant, let's say, who's in charge of enlisting soldiers, new ones, signing them up, and your questions to them will be to find out how much is their dedication to the nation and to the army. Let's say it's an army recruitment center and you are in charge. You will be looking for those who are willing to lay down their life for the country and the unit or the military or the army, right? Not those who are, who are looking for an exit route where how to get saved from this situation. Do you want such cowards? Yes or no? Jesus doesn't want cowards who are only wanting to be saved. They are greedy, selfish. He wants those who are willing to lay down as he did, as his apostles did, as the prophets did, all of them. Keeping on that in the background, 
while I was thrash, thra, thrashing around in the water, <laughs> splashing water with my foot or feet, barefooted, I learned from a friend. Her name is Sunshine when she came to India last year. She used to tell me to take the uh, saddles off, put it in the backpack and walk barefoot on the sand. It's one of the most amazing things, guys. I splash the water, hydrotherapy and sand therapy. It's amazing. We are made out of dust. There is a magical connection. When you walk barefooted, you don't have to go to the beach. How about back, walking barefoot in the park? A park. American style of pronunciation. <laughs> and then the Indian style is something else. Park. <laughs> so I have to speak three kinds of <laughs> English depending on my audience. So I was thrashing the water. I mean, splashing the waters. And suddenly the spirit of God came upon me. He said, Raj, beta, beta, beta. Beta means child in Hindi. And don't get scandalized. How does he speak Hindi? He speaks all languages. In fact, all languages originate from God. Everything good comes from heavens, right? So, he pointed suddenly, look, I'm right now thick into Bible study. I would highly encourage you beyond all these videos and all, much more important is to study the word. Use Bible in the year by Tyndale. It's really good. Choose your uh, version of your choice. NKJV is one of the best. NASB is also good. I use NIV because that was what I was handed over. I'm very familiar. But there are shenanigans in NIV. Some mischief is there. So avoid that. Because I use Bible Hub as a second reckoner. To check out. And I put uh, notes there. To not get deceived. They try to cover Paul. They add words, delete words to cover for. We'll do one on NIV some other day. So while I was splashing the water, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, the Holy Spirit. I heard His voice in my mind amidst that crowd, but not a big crowd, a motley, tiny crowd of people, different people, mostly youngsters. I'm not that young. <laughs> So, I immediately understood that the Lord talking. He said, beta, beta, child, child. Unless, he says, you love me, don't you? I said, yes, Lord. I love you so much. And that, that also comes with practice, guys. Loving God. It takes time for that solid connection to be made. That's why I'm saying, fake it till you make it. If you don't love him today, fake it. But for those who love him, I think most of us love him, don't we? We are grateful for everything he does. See, he doesn't want flattery. If we praise him, it's not flattery. It is appreciation. We appreciate him for what he is. He likes it. He likes to be appreciated. By whom? We are his children. Don't daddies like? Don't moms like? I wish they were alive. I could hug them. I'm an orphan. I don't have dad and I don't have mom. I don't have very good relationship. It's not a brother or sister. <laughs> so all that is left is him. So that actually helped going uh, like gravitating close to God. I would recommend you also gravitate close to the Father, Father God. He said, beta, beta. Then he took me to Luke 14. I'll read out. Hear this carefully and you'll get the message. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, 1425 onwards, huh? Luke 1425. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate, he's telling the crowds, he's telling us, what, who's telling us? Jesus, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. He's setting rules here, guys, be... Very attentive right now. Okay? Don't let your attention drift anywhere. Get this point. Because he highlighted it yesterday. And of course it's in the Bible. And it's Jesus speaking. The Supremo. <laughs> All authority has been given to him. Doesn't he say that? Matthew 28, 18, 20. He is holding the power of attorney of Father God. As he likes, as he deems. But he always does the will of Father God. You also do guys. Kick your will. Kill your will. Do the will of God. That's one of the deep keys to success. Big key. Master key to success. 
and salvation, if you will, without craving it. Nobody will deny you entry into heaven if you are doing the will of God consistently. Will of God was very easy. W-I-L. What is W-I-L? Will. It's an acronym. Walk in love. What does walk in love mean? Exist and operate from the standpoint of love. Rather than hate, judgment, sin. Love is the opposite of sin. Solomon says that. Proverbs 10, 12. It covers all sin. Peter says that. First Peter 4, verse 8. Covers a multitude of sin. I'll give you a lot of uh, good stuff to, today. I'm in a mood. The chai really got me. <laughs> it's the spirit of God. So what is he saying? Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them. He said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. This cross stands for righteousness. Epitome of righteousness is love. Get that guys. You don't want to expound more on that. You get it. You guys are smart. Talking about the cross of righteousness. Cross of Jesus' teachings with us, which revolved around love, compassion, righteousness, truth. L-C-T-R. Love, truth, compassion, righteousness. I have made videos on that. Check it out. Right? It's not so hard. It's the best thing to practice righteousness. And it's the safest thing in the world. It secures you from all sides in the world and in his world. Nobody can dare touch a righteous man easily. If you're paying your taxes, doing the right things, you're not, you don't get fouled up with law and those things. He's liberating you. See the depth of his teaching, guys. Do the right things right away. Okay, there's a lot in this. Why did he tell me? Raj, Raj, beta, beta. He says, unless you love me. See, the word here is hate. Be careful what's being written here. If anyone comes to me and does not hate, hate was never spoken by Jesus Christ. These are shenanigans of Luke. Who was Luke? Well, unfortunately, I, uh, we don't have too much information on this man. He's a mystery man who was chosen in preference to Peter, like once like Peter. Bartholomew, Philip, Thomas, where, Andrew, where are their Gospels? <laughs> Who is this Luke? Where did he come from? Why is he there? There are questions which need to be examined and examined hard. So there are no answers, you know. The only information we have is <laughs> testimony of the Antichrist Paul. That Luke was a doctor. Bible is full of clues. Yes, he doctored the Bible. Especially in Acts. But most of Luke is okay. Some words have been changed. For example, that's where I... That's why I'm recording the video. You get it in a flash. Your spirit will tell you. Whatever I tell you, I tell you when I get it from the Lord. Otherwise, I won't tell you. Honestly. Ask the Lord who I am. He tells me, I tell you. I won't otherwise. Guy, I don't don't charge a penny. That talks about my credibility. I, I am not a rich guy at all. I, I manage. He gives me, provides me all this good stuff. I have a decent life. All that is God's love and mercies. I don't like to use the word grace. Jesus never used it. Neither did he use it on the day of judgment to save people by grace. All these are in deceptions. Now, let's examine. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, it's not hate. He yesterday told me it was love. But he changed it to hate. Why would Jesus say to hate your father? Hey, when there's a, those are to respect your father. Isn't that a ten command? One of the ten commands, right? Or elsewhere. Why would he say that? He didn't say that. It was twisted by Mr. Luke. Luke. Lucas. Lucifer. What does Luke mean? Light. What does Paul reveal about devil? Masquerades as angel of light. Luke is likely written by the devil. But don't get too shocked. And he wrote it under the pen name of Luke. 
which gives a, he has to give otherwise you god won't allow him that was the clue given to us but we didn't catch it it is written by angel of light who nobody knows no neither you i nobody knows who is this luke paul knows he is a mystery guy i put a video who is this luke but he likely i rely on del tondo del tondo has done a lot of work mr douglas del tondo i do not agree with his uh, salvation doctrine at all but to the extent that paul is a deceiver he has done phenomenal brilliant work yours truly has also done some work i have been on paul's case in 7 years <laughs> compiling a uh, tons of evidence coming back to D- douglas del tondo his take after his he's from san francisco seems the californians are doing a good job i'm an ex california right in right now in uh, india he found that it was likely plagiarized all right what luke was plagiarized from matthew's texts it's very similar to the gospel of matthew you know what uh, luke was doing he was trying to establish credibility because he would need that in book of acts these things were remember 300 years later after the uh, events happened at the time of jesus the canon took place 2 300 years later so they knew exactly how to proceed very evil people were involved in the canon of bible and yet we get the whole story because the the two gospels of matthew and luke were enough no uh, beg your pardon matthew and john were enough to understand exactly what the mataya ma masaya had come to teach so we have excellent books matthew the churches do not have the courage to teach it exposes pauline deception smashes them it to bits <laughs> matthew salute because he walked with the lord he knew what lord is what is speaking read matthew day and night day and night to get you do not have to read anything after matthew in the new testament except john matthew taught about obedience john talk about love that's why guys the will of god was walk in love what does walk in love means live in love exist operate from stand love god love others jesus says that's how you fulfill the entire law and the teachings of the prophets prophets they say i the way i pronounce it sounds like prophet t r o f i t nice point sir guys we are having a good time together i wish i could pass you some chai sorry i can't do through <laughs> the problem is if you want to meet me if i come back to lancaster in california we'll have a cup of tea somewhere not starbucks more organic than that Jesus told me about this it was not hate but it was love you got it guys you said raj but you could have said that in the first 2 minutes and relieved us for all these talks your yakety yak no it's good stuff think of us having a chat over a cup of tea isn't that good guys i love you guys honestly i do and even more a tad more the brothers and sisters in jesus slight partiality there hmm? so again we'll finish with this suppose one uh, he says if anyone comes to me and does not hate hate their father and mother so he says substitute that replace that word with love got it it's an it's a correction in the bible this is wrong this is these are shenanigans talking about hate that's not our jesus mm mm-hmm. is love god is love first john 4 8 first john 4 16 jesus and father are one john 10 30 so hate cannot uh, love cannot t- teach hate i also didn't get it till last night so i got it now thank you lord father god love you love you love you love you father love all bless you father bless all indiscriminate love and blessings to everybody up most for father son and the holy spirit so he will finish with this jesus says if anyone comes to me and does not hate 
father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. What he's saying is, and which was tweaked, twisted by Luke, this, uh, you know who he is now, I don't want to keep repeating, he's from the evil man or he himself. Anyone comes to me and does not hate, let's replace it with love. If anyone comes to me and does not uh, love me more than their father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sister, even more than their life, you need to love me more than you love others is the simple line. But badly needed a correction and you got it, right? Make that note correction today itself in the Bible. He's saying, unless you love me, Jesus, more than you love your daddy, your mummy, your brother, your sister, your bank account, your careers, your everything, whatever, your wealth, your health, your life, even your life. You cannot even be my disciple. He says you don't even qualify to be my disciple. Got it, guys? See, I'll be closing now. I don't need that phone, thankfully. I can hold this with both my hands. Guys, he wants us to give him the highest place of prominence in our lives. We need to love him, respect him, honor him. How do we honor him? Through our works. Those are the fruits of our lives. That is what he will be looking at on the day of judgment. And that's the picture we have. Revelation 20, 11, 15, where the books were opened and each person was judged on what they had done. Their works were taken into consideration. And who were saved, we even have that. And I keep repeating because it will play out word for word. It is given by Jesus in the blessed book of Matthew. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Where Jesus will separate the goats which he rejected and the sheep. Wheat, I have an accent, wheat and the tares will be separated from each other. Be very careful. Everybody has to go through that sifting or separation. You and I and everybody. Nobody is saved until Matthew 25, 31, 46 happens. The best thing is to do is to, like he says, pick up the cross, deny the flesh and its sinfulness follow him. Obey him. What does obedience lead to? Righteousness. What does righteousness lead to? Love. Finally, it was a story of love. The law of God was given. If you see the Ten Commandments, forget everything else in the law. Think about the Ten Commandments. All the ten are love God, love others. What did Jesus say? How do you fulfill the entire law and the teachings of the prophet? Love God with all your heart, might and soul and love the neighbor, the fellow human being he meant as yourself. When you do that, this is the entire law and the teachings of the prophets. This is the essence of it. It was the story, guys. We need to love. And we need to put God above everything we have in life. Everything. Sit down and make, including your cats, your dogs, your pets, your cars, your bank balance, your wife, your children, wives, your husband, your children, anything, everything. You have to learn. You have to fall in that category where this person loves God more than anything. Unless that happens you and I cannot be saved and it does happen when we recognize I'll give you a good uh, way of being grateful think of this breath. We cannot see I go underwater a lot in the swimming pool. I try up to two minutes till my head starts bursting. That much I can almost close to two minutes I say, Raj, we can't be in the water for two minutes. That means if we are cut off from this air, we are die dead. Yes. And who put this breath of life? Father God. And he breathed it in our nostrils. Sorry for my long nose, Jewish nose. <laughs> we breathe off. We live off him. We have to learn to appreciate him. We need to learn to love him. And put God before everybody and everything. That was the key to Christ's salvation, teaching of salvation. Thank you guys for listening to me, for being with me. And God bless you abundantly. And I pour out my love on you 
in great abundance. God bless. Bye.